Thomas to the green flag. Princiata on his outside. And here we go, they're off and running. The 602 Sportsman Modifieds heading down into turns number one and two. You can see a little slick Great there. flag going to come out. Justin Ledoux walking it up the speedway. There goes Dugan down to the inside as they had built right in Groton, New York by Dan Searles and his team. So a very potent machine for Justin Ledoux. And that, oh, we got two around in turn number four right about now. Down the front stretch, Murtaugh on the hammer. Jumps out to the advantage. Ooh, contact between Komar and Toth as they head into turns number one and two. Princiata there in. All right, how you guys doing today? We're done right TV. We're here at the hotel. We're interviewing. Nick Stark. And? Ali Scott. And we're here for the Grit Series. We've had a lot of different stuff happen this weekend. Um, why don't we start with uh, kind of what happened this weekend? Um, so yes, so Monday we got rained out, then Tuesday, and um, we switched tracks at three o'clock. How, how'd that happen? Uh, you know what, you kind of roll with the punches sometimes. Uh, everybody's down here to race, um, and it, knowing that, uh, we don't just want it to be a wash for anybody. Um, uh, the entire situation at Putnam County Speedway, um, not really the greatest thing that could possibly happen for a week, but um, you know what? Uh, that's when you, you channel your resources, you reach out to people that, that you possibly can. Um, we've had this event with Phil and Liz at North Florida Speedway for uh, three years now. Um, and uh, this year, based on uh, dates and scheduling, we, we decided not to go to North Florida um, so as not to step on another promoter. Um, so that's why we made the move. And you know what, like, hindsight's always 20-20. Uh, and thankfully, uh, they, they were ready to go and they were ready to receive us. And so you take, uh, you take a day that's ultimately gonna be a wash and ultimately a week that's gonna be a wash and a lot of, a lot of pissed off racers and all of a sudden you have, you have a race. Oh yes, and I enjoyed it. I thought you guys did a very good job, especially with what we were working <laughs> with. Um, it was very stressful, I'm sure for you. Um, now let's get the driver side of that a little bit. How did it feel to practice Saturday at Putnam and then go to a whole new track it was, Tuesday? It was different. Um, kind of shook up a little bit because I, we practiced at one track and then got there at three and had to jump to a next track. But we came 19 plus hours to race, so we had to make it work. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, now let's try to talk about grid a little bit here. So um, how many years have you guys been the uh, promoter for that series, uh, sorry. So we're going into our 10th year as a series. Um, that's our 10th year as a 602 Sportsman series. Um, 600 Modifieds have had two, se uh, two seasons underneath us and uh, we're going into our third. We also have a stock car series as well. Um, yeah, we've, we kind of start, it's, it's myself and my father and um, we've always enjoyed the promoting aspect of things and that's kind of where Grit came from and it's, uh, if, I, if I told you all the changes that were made <laughs> through the series, through the years, I, you probably wouldn't believe it, but uh, it's, yeah, it's really kind of morphed into a, into a really cool thing. The one thing I really enjoyed, because where we're from, we do the Delaware restarts, the double file all the way, that was really fun to watch last night. Yeah, it, you know what, it, <laughs> there's, there's people that really love it and there's people that really hate it. The ones that really hate it usually are the ones on the receiving end of, of, uh, of kind of a bad restart. Um, but it has ultimately kind of been our trademark. It's, it's, it's been a thing that, that really makes the races, it, it changes everything. You, you know, you're, you're not just a leader out front. You're not just single file. It's not just like, well, so-and-so's, so-and-so's out front and it's over. No, uh, that, that, that double file restart significantly changes things. It really does, and it was really fun to watch. Do you like a double file restarts as a driver, or would you prefer going back to Delaware? Or? Personally, I don't like Delaware because I feel like the person in front has the greatest like outcome of it, but that's not always the case. I like double because it just was more fun, and you have more of a chance. All right, and um, so you raced back home too, 
or do you race as well, or is it race stuff? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> we go to the track sometimes. <laughs> no, we have we have a stock car, and uh, I I grew up watching my dad uh, my entire life. Uh, I watched my dad, um, my grandfather raced, my uncle raced, uh, his his father raced. Um, I've been at the track my entire life. Uh, I try to bring my son to the track anytime I can, um, whether it be uh, where if he's enjoying the races or just bringing his matchbox cars and creating a track. And, but I, I, I grew up around it. Um, it's a hard thing to escape. Uh, personally, uh, life happens, and it's a really hard thing to, uh, to try to tackle. And, you know, I got away from it for a while. I, I, I scratched the itch, and I, I loved racing, and I, I loved what I was doing. Um, and then, like I said, life happened. You have a kid, you have, you have a job, you have work, you have this, you have that. And, uh, and then COVID happened, and then all of that came to a halt, and I had a lot of downtime, and I'm a person that doesn't like downtime. And I started racing again, and I was like, like, a, like a crackhead that needed a fix. Like, I just, I wanted to race, and uh, I did a ton of it last year. And so... Uh, we dialed it back this year. We d we did a little bit, and uh, I want to say it's done, but it, it's probably not. It's yeah. probably we still have a car, we still have a motor, so uh, there's a good chance that it'll probably you know it'll make its way to a track. It's it's just it's a thing. Yeah. And you said you had a son. I have a son. Yeah. And how old is he? He's he's five years old, and he is a he is a fiend for racing, and he's actually already asked me uh, for a car, which. I probably screwed up in that regard, bringing him to the track because it's it's an expensive thing. But uh, you know what? If if it makes him happy. And how old were you when you first started? Um, I first started when I was like four or five. And what did, what division? Um, I started with motocross, and then I went to um, Mike Rods for three years, and now this is my fourth year doing six hundreds. Fourth year doing six hundreds. Yeah, those things were fun to watch, you guys. Those, those were fast. We don't have nothing really like that at home. So we don't have the 602s either, so it was really cool. So when are you guys taking them to Iowa? <laughs> so, but, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, let's let's go to Iowa. I mean, do you guys have sun? <laughs> uh, I mean, we got to go more in the summertime, but we can get you there. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, we can do a snow track if we really wanted to. That that would be fine. You know what? Uh, so I've, I've had a chance to follow her family for a while, uh, the racing family. Uh, when I grew up, uh, her grandfather was racing. Uh, her dad raced. Uh, her uncle races. Um, and then, you know, they started in the Mike Rods. Um, they did some asphalt Mike Rod racing, which are around our area. They're kind of, they're go-kart-esque, if you will. I don't, I don't know if Mike Rods are a thing in the Midwest. They're not, but I did look them up when um, we got here because I was talking with her dad, and he wanted to show us pictures of them. They look pretty they're, little neat things. They're very boxy. They're they're. They're different. Uh, they're very go-kart-esque, but um, you know what? From what I've seen from the racers that go from Mike Rods to what we do now, um, the translation is is super impressive. Um, you know, you've got Allie, you've got her brother Chase. Um, uh, we got another racer around our area, Jordan Millard. Um, there's piles of racers that have started in that in those ranks because their parents wanted them to race. And, you know, realistically, uh, when you send your kid in a uh, – 600 cc modified around a track and i gotta imagine it's probably super nerve-wracking i'm a i'm a i'm a hover dad so like <laughs> like when max is walking through a kitchen or anything i just worry these gonna smash his face off a counter or anything yeah. like that so like here here's a here's a suzuki gsxr motor just grip and rip son have a good day <laughs> um it's it's got to be stressful so yeah mike rods are a great translation honestly because uh, from what i've seen it <laughs> it works yeah. um yeah, I was talking to her mom, and she said she's very nerve-wracking every time you go on the track. So I, I can believe it. Um, you said so. You you said something good. The parents get the kids into. It. Is that how it worked, or were you begging your dad to start? Well, I grew up around racing. When like my dad, my dad's grandpa raced. My it's just been. In, I'm like the fifth generation racer. Um, once I saw my uncle racing a lot, I I kept begging my dad, but. He he might say he didn't get me into it, but he wanted me to, just as much as I did. All right, all right. Um, and then, um, is there any um, sponsors or anything you'd like to thank while we're talking, or anybody that just 
you really have to get out there and thank for everything, especially maybe the North Florida guys for getting that track ready for us. That was, I've sure. I've never seen that happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this weekend, yeah, this this week has been um, it's been something. Um, as a whole, uh, we have our we have our main sponsors for the series: uh, Chesapeake Paving out of Salisbury, Maryland. Jeff Brown and his team uh, step up every year for for this this basically winter nationals. Um, Wicked Tees, Pine Valley, New York. Uh, if you're looking for any motorsports uh, uh, garb, any any anything, they'll do anything you want. Uh, BA Headers out of Genoa. Um, honestly, beyond that, beyond our sponsors, uh, the fact that at three o'clock yesterday we have a meeting, we bring it up, we're able to have a place to race, and the fact that the racers and everybody said, "Yep, let's go." There was literally a, a friggin' convoy. <laughs> like I look, I looked in the rear view mirror and I was like, "Wow, this is crazy!" Like this is, the, it's, the, it was the, yeah, it was. I said it on the broadcast. It was the most Mondayest Monday you could possibly have. Like it was the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, we go to a racetrack. It's not ready. Uh, nobody wants to get it ready. And uh, hey, let's drive an hour and a half north and have a race at a track that nobody planned on having a race at. Yeah. And uh, are you going to give us time to change our gears? Yeah, we'll give you time to change your gears because we're also going to be running around as well. So, um, you know, beyond that, like everybody that came down here, everybody that raced, everybody that tuned in to the broadcast, um, I know you said last night uh, there was there was probably about 98 people at the, at the peak of the night. Yeah. It's awesome. That's yeah. super cool. It's it, it's. It's wild to me to know that people in upstate New York and Pennsylvania and New Jersey and Iowa and Oklahoma and everybody are tuning in across the country for this, this what ultimately was a dog and pony show yesterday. It's wild. It's just, it's crazy to me that, and, and the, also hats off to you guys, because you know what? That show changed yesterday and you guys packed everything up and were ready to head yeah. north with us. Yeah. And I never thought that was going to happen. So, DoneRight.tv, fantastic. And I got one more thing. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, but there was a disqualification last night. Sure. And it really didn't get talked about in the broadcast. I just kind of want you to explain the computer problem with that. Because sure. obviously, if you can't get into the computer, you have to assume the guy's cheating. Um, is that pretty much sum it up? Sure. Uh, so the 600cc modifieds, uh, basically what they are is a Suzuki GSXR 600 motor. Uh, they're a stock motor. They're meant to be stock. Um, they have a, a computer that uh, basically a computer harness in the dash of the cars. And um, what happens, there's a, there's a builder of these cars in Pennsylvania, um, and he he has created essentially, he is the controller of it, and I, I totally understand the concept of it, but at the same time with other tracks and other places bringing these cars in, it has created essentially an issue. Uh, basically, you know, the parts and the, and the, the chassis and the, the motors and everything have to come from him. However, if you're going to branch out and do that sort of thing, you need to be able to detect those sort of things. So we have a computer program. Basically, we can plug into the computers, and you can you can check those motors. Um, his motors are locked. You can't check them. You can't do anything with them uh, it, it, unless he was to provide the password. So y you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can't sign into your computer. I can't do anything with that. I, I, what do you, what would you like me to do with that? I can't. Uh, great. That sounds that sounds fantastic. However. Uh, when you take a division that's that's meant to be created with a stock mentality and a and a and a spec integrity, why would you ever ever make it based on the fact that I have to reach out to you for a password? Yeah. You know, so so uh, basically a promoter that creates a series and does that and and makes it so that you can't uphold that integrity. With with good logic and good reason, uh, you you can't do anything with it. And you know, I I appreciate the fact. I love I love the division that he's created. I really do. Um, the fact that we're drawing from, you know, uh, there was registration from Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Iowa, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, um, everywhere. And so you have that, and it's it's a really great thing. But 
you're you're also shooting yourself in the foot by the fact that you're you're basically how do I know that this person that comes and spends X amount of dollars with you is the same as the person that doesn't come and spend X amount of dollars? So it's a it's a it's a really tough thing. You know, we've we've tried to take this division, bring it on, and and um, and take it in a way to uh, to kind of police that, uh, but at the same time uh, uphold the integrity of what they've established. So it, it's it's a tough thing. I, I feel awful for those guys. They hauled a long way. Um, and you know what? They may very well have been completely legal, but with a locked motor or with a locked box, yeah. excuse me, with a locked box, and um, everybody else doesn't. So, how do you how do you how do you go from there? I get that one hundred percent. One hundred percent. You can't get in it. You gotta assume the guy's cheating. All right, I'm gonna talk to you about last night. Green flag going to come out. Justin Ledoux walking it up the speedway. There goes Dugan down to the inside as they head. So wrong place, wrong time for Allie Scott as she gets turned coming out of turn number four. Stretch, of course, is the tail side of that car. better mood yeah now i am <laughs> um well first of all in the heat didn't get too lucky my clutch broke but thank god there were, there was also a guy that well not thank god but he flipped so we had a little bit of a time to fix that we got it fixed then going off the restart i got spun around and a car flipped over top of me so brand new car that didn't really end well it was no one was really happy um let's just say that and then I go out for my feature when we got our car fixed and my car absolutely lost like all power so um can do you know what happened at all with the power or just oh uh, well when we got in when we looked at it a little bit the um, a wire to the uh, battery box like snapped maybe it's because I hit the uke tire just right or something because everyone was spinning out in front of me but um we don't know what really happened after, and after looking at it for a while, we finally figured out what happened. But thank God we got it running again. And are you following grip for this whole year, or just a couple races here and there? Or do you know yet? We don't really know yet. We'll, we'll, we'll probably make it out to some of them. And um, any sponsors you'd like to thank? CSC Construction, Parker's Tent Rentals, River Runs Pilot Car. Um, Cortland Diner, Pops Automotive, um, CSC Construction. I think I already said that. You did say it, but it's fine. It's, fine. it's March. Yeah. You, you haven't gotten your Victory Lane speech down yet. It's fine. Or it's February, even. And Cortland Diner. All right, Cortland Diner. Um, anyone like to say hi to at home? Um, I want to say hi to my uncle and all of them. They didn't get to make it out. Uh, I also really want to thank my dad because without him, I wouldn't be anywhere. I wouldn't have been able to do this. I want to thank my grandpa too for inspiring me. He's pa he passed away ten years ago, but uh, he's my biggest inspiration. I want to thank my mom and dad, my brother. He he used to race, but he doesn't anymore. He became a part of the fire department, but I'm really glad of him of where he's been taking and all my family that supports me and comes all the way out to Florida to help me and watch me race. I really appreciate it. Anyone you'd like to say hi to at home or uh, anywhere? You know, honestly, it, it's not so much. I'm here with my dad, and I get to spend time with it with my dad, so that's that's a super cool thing for me. Um, I want to say how much I appreciate like that that whole interaction there uh, with the, with your family. That is 110 percent what we've tried to bring out of the series and, and tried to create with everybody. Um, is a fact that there's a destination. Uh, honestly, uh, our luck sucks, uh, and uh, weather is not our friend. Um, so, you know, we'll probably revisit that going uh, in the, in the future to, to figure out a way to to make this um, 
feasible for everybody, but it, that's that's 110 percent what it's about. Um, the fact that families can spend time together, um, it's it's a good excuse to to really get out and do do your thing, and it's a it's a it's a good excuse to have it to have a good time, especially in February. Uh, we're upstate New York people, man. Uh, we left we left. 15 inches of snow it was miserable it was it was it was zero outside and you know <laughs> I, I landed and you know what there wasn't a drop of sunshine it was still 50 so that's that's pretty good we're fi we're 50 degrees in the positive well, there you, go. <laughs> you guys talk about fam family and i'm telling you guys it's been like back at home just uh celebrating with everyone talking with everyone all these people are here for her it was just a fun time all week and i'm telling you guys thank you very much it was so awesome Thank you guys. Wow, thank you guys. Thank you. Have, a, have a good one. This has been Josh Moore. Thank you for Gunright TV. Subscribe and like.